Hey sports fans, how's it going? I'm Sadi and today we're going to work on our titling skills. So if you're familiar with the text plus node and its modifiers, let's look at some of the ways we can use these tools to create a cinematic, professional looking movie title. Let's get started. Let's set up our project for 1920 at 30 frames. Bring in a Fusion Comp and head over to the Fusion page. Let's grab the footage. And let's view it in the viewer. As you can see, this is 4K footage and we're working in full HD resolution. So let's set up our project real quick. I'm going to bring in a background node and call it settings. Because whatever is piped into the background of your comp is what's going to drive the resolution and the, the color space of that comp. And if you're working with mixed media of different resolutions, Fusion needs to know what your intended output preference is. That's where the background node comes into play. And give it transparency. So basically, it's just an empty node. And then I will set it to 1920. I'll set the depth. And let's work in Rec. 709 because this is intended for television. Let's go ahead and pipe in our media into the settings node and look at the output. So now, as you can see, the project is being output to the correct resolution. As you can see, the Pixabay footage uh, looks pretty bland as it is. So let's tweak that real quick before we start working on our title. I'll leave the timestamps in the description so you can skip to the titling part. Next, I'm going to add in a resize node and this is going to display my full image. But because I want to zoom in, I'll leave the resize node out for now. Before we start titling, let's give this footage a little bit of color and set the mood. So I'm going to click on the footage and loop it, add some grain. And this is not the default settings for the grain. These are the settings that I've saved as my default. So when you add it in, it will actually be something different. Okay, this is something I learned from CB Super. If you haven't checked out his channel, great guy. He does a lot of procedural tools. Check out his channel. We got our grain going here, and I'm going to tweak it a little bit. There we go, that's perfect. And I'm going to give it some color by adding a LUT. So I'm going to pipe this in, and I'm going to choose a LUT from the Workbench pack. I'll link that pack in the description below. I'm going to add some contrast. And because it was playing really fast, I'm going to slow it down to about 40%. Let's go ahead and preview the first 100 frames. Now this is gonna drag a little bit on my system to work with all this. So I'm going to render out a rough draft so I can just play it without performance issues. I'm going to drop in a couple of assets just to make it look a little bit more spy movie. Paste in a plus sign asset that I made. There you go, a little plus signs, just to give it a little satellite view texture and feel to it. And I'll turn down the blend to maybe about 30%, that's good enough. And you can make all kinds of graphic elements and keep them on hand in your hard drive and drop them in whenever you want. If you guys want me to do a tutorial on how to create these graphical elements, let me know in the comments. Next, I'm also going to bring in some, some graphical elements. Pretty cool stuff. Blend this to about 30%, maybe even less. That's right. 
right here is fine. Another one. Change it to screen, turn it down. Transform. Put it over here somewhere. Another one. A little number crawl. And screen. Turn it down. Turn on the loop. And I'm going to move this with the transform somewhere over here. That's it. Let's go ahead and preview. And the assets I'm using right here are from Glitch Lord. If you go to Element Supply, Company, these are right here the Glitch Lord pack. These are just amazing, very high quality, very professional looking graphical elements that you can use. Uh, to really take your, your game to the next level. I'll link Glitch Lord in the description for you guys if you want to grab it. And now I'm going to render this movie out so I can play it at full speed while I'm titling. Now that our render is complete, we can save this composition. I like to just go ahead and grab all the nodes, copy and paste them into a text editor. But you can also go into File and Export your Fusion Comp like this. I'm going to bring in my rough draft that I just rendered. And now, as you can see, it plays at full speed on my system. So we can start with the titles. Create a background node. Merge the footage. Create an output node. Rename. My nodes. Create a text node. Type it in. And type in the text. Let's talk about typefaces real quick. A blocky sort of solid looking typeface doesn't work because it's too obvious. This would be good for like a sale flyer or something. I could try something serif. Now serif could work. It looks really, really good, very classy. But the problem is the serif gives it sort of a traditional classic look, a Victorian era look which is not what the movie is about and you know the, the movie is more futuristic and uh, sort of high tech now an obvious choice would be to choose a techie font let me show you how that would look something like this would be okay for like a sci-fi movie uh, because it's very stylized and very bold uh, this to me signifies more science fiction like the terminator or Transformers or something like that. Whereas our movie is about sort of CIA, NSA, double agent, spy, kind of a Jason Bourne kind of a look and feel. So for that, what I want is something subtle and something modern. Now the obvious choice would be something like Babis, which is an extremely popular font right now. And this looks really good because it has this sort of condensed look to it, which signifies that there is a lot of information condensed or secrets are hidden and condensed. So that works for me. But I'm going to take this to the next level by choosing something that is similar, but not as recognizable. Fiala 1, I think this is also a free Google font you can download. I'm going to go with this one. Now let's talk about color. 
up here on top, you have this versioning option. So version number one would be just the white. Okay. And plain bright white is okay, but it doesn't really have a lot of character and depth to it. So if I was to use something white, what I would do is create another version, maybe pick something light from the image in the background, like this blue here. And then I would take the saturation out and give it a little bit of dirt and gray, something like this. Okay, so this would be like a white which is sort of overcast, and this would be perfect. So let's leave it at that. I'm going to create another version, uh, which is going to be a more stylized version. So color can do a lot for your composition. This next version, I'm going to do a red, which obviously signifies danger. It could be a horror movie title or violent, you know, something like that, something scary. Uh, it really stands out in the composition. So I'm going to go with the red, but I'm going to create a, a red with a little bit of character in it. So I'm going to give it a little bit of gray. See that difference? That, that's a world of a difference because, you know, real blood has this dark look to it, right? It's not a uh, bright red. Bright red would signify more uh, like evil or devil or horror, whereas this kind of red is, you know, to me at least, it signifies danger and violence, you know, and that's the, the look that I'm going for. It's lacking a little bit of uh, character, so I'm going to add a little bit of texture to it, uh, just give it a little grain, and you'll notice how much better it's going to look once uh, you put that on. That, that makes a world of a difference. So next, let's talk about a placement in the composition, right? Where, where should I put this? So I'm going to bring in the grid tool. Uh, if you're familiar with the rule of thirds in photography, anything in the center is going to give you a lot of harmony and balance. So in the boxes, you're going to get a lot of symmetry, right? What are we trying to do here? We're trying to create the opposite of balance and harmony, right? We're creating tension and mystery and uncertainty. To do that, we're going to use the intersections of these lines or the lines itself. So right here is where I'm going to uh, place my text. Now the size of the text is also very important. And uh, the bigger the size, the more sort of uh, obvious the message is. Whereas the smaller the size, the more sort of hidden and secretive and mysterious it is. And this size looks pretty good. Now let's work on the animation, the actual animation of the title itself. And this is what's going to give it that cinematic blurry effect. So I'm going to click on this area here and click on follower. Whatever effect you're putting on your text is going to happen one by one based on whatever settings you have in the timings tab. In the order, I'm going to choose randomly but one by one, and I'll give it a delay of three frames, okay? The first thing I'm going to do is work on the opacity. So let's start animating. Frame 30. I'll animate the opacity to zero. Frame 70. I'll animate the opacity to full. So this is when it's going to come into view. Then I'm going to go to frame 170. So 100 frames, it's going to stay and animate, no change. And then 200, I'm going to animate and fade it out. Okay, let's go ahead and render this. All right, so that looks pretty good. Next, I'm going to add this uh, softness to it. So same deal. Frame 30. Crank up the blur. Frame 70. Animate. Turn it down all the way. 
frame 170. Keep it at zero and frame 200. Crank it up all the way. Let's go ahead and preview. That's starting to look good. Next, we're going to give it a little size variation. I'm going to go to 30. Animate this to maybe 0 0.045 and 70 back to 0.5. Okay, let's preview. So as you can see, it has this little subtle uh, size up animation. One last thing I'm going to do is add a little animation for the kerning. Kerning is uh, also called tracking, which is the distance between these letters. So I'm going to go to frame 70. That's where I'll start. And I'll add a keyframe. And then I'll go to 220, 1.05, which is very, very small, subtle change but it'll look amazing once it's done. Let's go ahead and preview. And there you have it. As a bonus, I'm gonna throw in another text effect for the names of the actors. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Text node. Type it in, and I'll copy my grain over, paste in the name of the actor, font, smaller size. I'm going to position it right here. There you go. And then I'm going to animate the opacity. So it fades in and fades out. Let's go to frame 250. And Opacity 0, frame 290, opacity 100%, frame 390, keep the opacity full, and frame 430, turn the opacity down. And then what I'm going to do is, is add a text scramble modifier. Give it a randomness of 0 0.03. I don't need these capital letters. I could take those out. You can leave the numbers in or take them out. It's up to you. And then the scramble will only happen when the text is being revealed. So when it comes on right here, that's where it's going to happen. So let's go to 250 and animate. And let's go to 290 when it's fully visible and animate it zero. Okay, let's go ahead and preview this. There you have it guys, a little insight into my personal approach to working with titles what goes into it as far as mood, creative direction, color, and effects go. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Happy compositing. I'm Sadi, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.